I admit it, I probably use map visuals sometimes a bit too much. However, they look so good on a report page, especially the one that we're gonna look at today. Flow maps? Yes, you know which one I'm talking about. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're new to this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on everything Power BI related. And let's talk about flow maps. If you have data with locations for an origin and destination, and you want to plot that on a map with a line in between, then you can use a flow map. And this is super useful, for example, if you want to visualize traffic flow or shipment data or airlines that fly from one location to another. Now let's build the flow map that you can see over here where we have different flight routes from and to different airports. Now as a starting point for our report page, I have a bar chart that shows the different airports sorted in descending order on the number of flight routes, okay? So now right next to it, I want to have my map. So let's import this custom visual. So you go to get more visuals, and then open up the visual marketplace. And let's then search for flow map. And you see, it's the very first one over here. And let's then add it to our report. Like for every map, we need some location data. Now for this map, we have an origin and we have a destination. Okay, so let's go to our data set where we have the origin city. I'm gonna put that one on, origin. And then we can go to destination, city, and put that one on to destination. Now at this point, it starts to do the geocoding. And that will take quite a while because we have thousands of rows, okay? So let's stop this and I'm gonna filter on London and concentrate just on the London airport first. And there you go, we have our flow map. At this point, it's kind of difficult to see what is going on. So let's make some changes to it and see what options we have under the formatting tab. Now let's have a look at the different styles that we can choose for this map. Now here under type, we can choose straight line. Okay, that is the most straightforward one. We just have a straight line between the origin and the destination. Now it looks quite overwhelming. So that's why there's also the flow, which was uh, the default one that popped up at the beginning. Now here, some of the lines, they get combined at the beginning before they split. And therefore it gives you a little bit of a better overview and feels less overwhelming. And then the third one, the great circle one, which you have probably have seen before as well, where you just have a curved line between the origin and the destination. Now for now, we're gonna focus on the flow. Now here we can choose what to go by, whether we choose the origin or the destination and the maximum number of flows that we want to show. So let's leave it for now as it is, and then later we get back to it. Now let's also have a look at the map elements. Okay, so if you go down just a bit more, open the map elements, and here we can say what we want to show. For example, for the road, default, with labels, without labels, hidden. Now let's leave it on default. Then for forest, I'm just going to turn that off. I think it's kind of distracting. And also here you can choose whether you want to show the labels. Now, here I leave them on. I want to see the country names, etc. Now, for city, I leave them off, icon off, building off. And so you have quite, quite some options. Now, if we then go to map control, now here we can choose a different type of map. So maybe you want to have it a little bit lighter. So let's switch to light. And maybe you want to show everything in a different language also possible, okay? And then pan, whether it should be on or off, that just means if you click and drag, and you can move. And then we also have zoom, and so when you use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in. For both of them, I probably would leave them on, otherwise it doesn't work in the way that you expect it to work. Then for out of fit, that one I often turn off. I don't like it when I'm zoomed in, and I change the filter and it zooms out again. So I just want to have full control, so therefore I turn it off. Now let's add some color to our map. So let's go to fields. And then here we have the color field and I'm gonna put the air line onto color. Okay, so that creates the legend. Now when you do this, the result might surprise you because now we have only 
four lines. Now, why is this? Because if we go back to format and then to visual style, then here you see the limit is five and bigger. So it only shows four lines. Okay, so if I increase this to 10, let's see what happens. See, now we have nine lines. Okay, so let's put this limit up to, let's say a thousand. Okay, so that starts to look a little bit better again. So now we have a lot of lines. So let's close the visual style section and go to color. And you see by default, it's giving every airline exactly the same color. Okay, so what you can do is turn on the autofill and then every airline gets a different color. Well, that looks a little bit overwhelming. Looks like a piece of art. So let's maybe filter it down to just the top three airlines. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to my filter section and then here we have the airline field. I'm gonna do a top end filter. I'm gonna say only show me the top three by the number of flight routes. Okay, so I'm gonna put flight routes onto the value and then let's apply the filter. You see, that starts to look a little bit better already. So if we now also add the legend to it so that we can see which airlines are in the top three. Now I'm gonna open the legend field and then scroll down just a little bit more. Now over here we have the color legend is on, but I still need to click here on auto fill. You see now it pops up here at the top. Now when you hover over the map, it says the visualization is incomplete due to unlocatable and then all of the city names that were not locatable. So something we can fix in the back end for now, let's just ignore it. Now by default, the legend is not showing yet. So we have to click here on autofill, which then takes the airline values and just puts them in, okay? Now if you want, you can also rename them. For example, I can say here, this is American Airlines. So you can do this for every single airline or you just fix it in your data set and have the full airline name in there, which I of course did. So I'm gonna go back to fields, take out airline from color, and instead of the airline code, I'm gonna put in the airline name. So now that we talked about color, let's also talk about the width of the lines that you see on the map. So there's a width field. Okay, so if we take, for example, the number of flight routes and put that one onto width, and you see a small change in the width of the lines, but let's customize it a bit further so that we clearly can see the differences. So I'm gonna go to the format tab and then open the width part. Now here we can adjust the scale. So let's take a minimum of one. And you see now the lines, the minimum lines become thinner and we can put the maximum up to let's say 25. You see clearly it changes the thickness of the lines. Now we can also play around with the scale. So by default it's linear. However, you also have the option to go for log, which makes the difference between the smaller ones and the bigger ones a little bit uh, less. Uh, so the smaller ones are become more visible. So here in the map, it looks pretty good. So let's, uh, let's go for that one. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. You see at the end of each line, we always have a little pie chart. Now here we also have a few customization options. So let's go to bubble. And then the first thing that we can change is what do we want to have the bubble for? For destination or for the origin, okay? Which is then over here, London. Okay, so that's the first thing that we can change. So let's change it back to destination. And then also the scale we can adjust. So instead of 25, which is the default, we could make it 50. And you see the pie charts become a little bit bigger. And the last thing that we can decide on for the bubble is the tooltip. And so when you hover over the pie chart, you see the destination city. Well, now we see it when we hover over on it. However, you can also see, say that you want to show it for all of them, which it's probably a bit overwhelming in our case, or only on click. So when you click on the pie chart, only then it shows the destination city. And the last option is to have no tooltip at all. I probably would go here for height. Okay, so then there's also tooltip when you hover over the lines themselves. And so here you see from airport, which is uh, London and then two, and then all the destination cities. 
So you might have expected just one. However, what the flow map does is, especially at the beginning, it combines all of the different flows. So that's why you see multiple cities for the destination. And then the closer you get to the airport, the less airports remain, okay? That makes this also such a good flow map. Otherwise, if you would have a separate line from the origin to the destination, it would be way too overwhelming. And in this way, you see the main lines and how it splits, okay? So you don't lose the detail. And we can change what shows when you hover over the lines. So there's a tooltip field. So if you, for example, take destination airport and put it on tooltip, and then hover over one of the lines, now you see the destination city, but also the code for the airport that we are flying to. Now, you're under the format tab, and then in the detail format, there you can say, how many should show. So if you want to show more, let's say 20, and then move over one of the lines, you see 20 city and airport codes. Now there's one more important section in the formatting, which is your advanced. Now cache is turned on. That just means if the geocoding already happened, it doesn't have to do it again. So let me show you if I turn this off and then for example, filter on Atlanta. Now it starts to do the geocoding, okay? Now, when this would be the first time that I would have clicked on it, okay, makes sense. And if I click back on London, then it starts to do the geocoding again, which is not a nice user experience. So usually I would say, let's leave it turned on, okay? So I'm gonna go back, turn it on. And the last option here is relocate. So if there is an airport that is not accurately mapped and you wanna change it a little bit, then you can just turn it on and let's for example take London Airport and move it a little bit more down okay once you're done you can say over here relocate turn it off and see the London Airport moved a little bit now if you also have latitude and longitude data then you can also use that on this map now you see when I switch over here the filter from London to let's say Paris it starts to do the geocoding, okay? And same if I click now again on Frankfurt. Well, because this is also the first time that I click on Frankfurt, it does again the geocoding. Now that means that your location data is shared with Bing Maps so that it can do the geocoding and come up with the latitude and longitude data for your locations. Now, if you don't want this, then you can use your own latitude and longitude fields. Okay, so here in my data set, I figured out for each airport what the latitude and longitude data is. I just use a different list from Google, merge it in Power Query, okay? And then we can use the latitude and longitude fields on this map visual. And you just have to make sure that for the latitude and longitude fields, you have them stored as decimal numbers and also that you assign the right data category. If you click, for example, on destination latitude, then over here, go to the top, there's the data category, just make sure it says then also latitude or longitude and the summarization you have to set to do not summarize. And that's it for a flow map. Now let's do a quick double check. So here we have a filter on Frankfurt where clearly Lufthansa is the main one, then Ethiopian Airlines and Condor uh, Flugdienst. Then if we switch to London, you see British Airways is the main one, then EasyJet American Airlines, makes sense. And if we go to Amsterdam, there we have KLM, the main Dutch airline, Alitalia, and Delta Airlines, okay? And you can clearly see to which directions they fly, what areas of the world they serve. Now, maybe you have some experience with flow maps and got some interesting insights, then share it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.